going to do it to the best of my ability because if I fail, that means I fail for my entire female nation, I call it. <laughs> is that possible? That was the question for myself. And it is absolutely possible. Good evening, America, and good afternoon, Australia, and a big shout out to those people listening in the UK, Germany, and Russia. Welcome back to the Everyday Business Show. I'm your host, Tony Lontis. Just a reminder, if you're listening live on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, we have Payo ready and waiting in the Philippines to take your comments, questions, and to send you links about the show. Now, we have an amazing guest today, and if you want to catch up on all of her information, please log on to TonyLontis.com and look under the guest section of the website, and you will find directions and information about our amazing guest today. If you want to catch up on any shows that you've missed, please jump on to Binge Networks TV USA, Hero Go TV USA, the Tony TV channel, and the Tony TV channel app available on all Roku, LG, and Samsung smart TVs across the planet. Now, before we get into our uh, interview today, just a little welcome to country. And we've been doing this each and every show and we will continue to do because it's part of an international movement that acknowledges the special and important role our Indigenous communities play in the development of a country's cultural identity. So I respectfully acknowledge the people of the Yugamba language region that's on the the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and broadcast and pay my respects to the elders past, present and all the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here listening today. Now, I'm really excited about our guest today. We have on the show Australia's answer to Taylor Swift, Miss Lily Grace. Welcome to the show, Lily. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Now, before we get on to the interview, I really want to tell you a little bit about our phenomenal guest. So, Lily Grace is a young country music singer and songwriter, and she's going to big places, and we are privileged to have her on the show today. She's already turning industry heads, collaborating collaborating with iconic Australian country music artist and drawing strong crowds. She's only 16 and is Gold Coast based like myself and I'm excited that we get to talk to her today. She is a soloist and she also plays the guitar. She has a mesmerizing voice and you will be transfixed by her talent. She's naturally gifted and Lily Grace began singing at the age of 10 and she dived deeper into her music a mere four years ago when she was gifted her first guitar at the age of 11. Her determination to self-fund her own equipment saw her busking at local markets and soon after attracting her to local cafes, restaurants and festivals. She has an accomplishment list as long as my arm and I don't want to delay our interview any longer. Lily, for someone so young, it's really an exciting time for you. And I just want to draw you back to the beginning. Now, I know that you didn't sort of start singing until you were 10, but at a younger age, was music interesting to you? Yeah, well, I grew up dancing when I was five and six, a little, little girl, and singing was never a thing I was good at. Um, Even when I was 10 and started singing, wasn't very good at it at all, but I loved it. And I'd get home from school and I picked up my guitar, which I was terrible at playing, and um, practiced and practiced and practiced. And I learned cover song after cover song, Ed Sheeran, Taylor Swift. I pretty much learned their catalog back to front. And um, I did that for about a year and a half. That's kind of what made me fall in love with it, I guess, just constantly yeah. learning new songs. And um, from there, I kind of moved on to songwriting. And yeah, that was wow. kind of where it kicked off for me. 
Lily, in the background of all that practice, and I know that you practice a huge amount, (laughs) did you have um, teachers, coaches that helped with that process as well? Yeah, yeah. I've been very lucky to have a really great support pace of people behind me. Um, Early on as well, I had an amazing singing teacher who was very nurturing and I wanted to be like her at the time because she sung in cafes and pubs and I was like, oh, I want to sing in cafes and pubs. And um, obviously I didn't get the gigs because I wasn't very good at the time. So I went and I bust on the street and um, I saved up to buy an amplifier because I wanted to get these kind of gigs. And that mm-hmm. was my goal for a solid year. And every Sunday I woke up and I went to the local markets, showed up with my guitar and busked. And um, I kind of, I got a lot better from practice and experience. Yeah. And then um, actually started getting some gigs, which was really exciting. Absolutely. Now, bearing in mind that you're um, only 16, do your parents go with you when you go and do gigs? Do they, like, it must be quite um, nerve-wracking for you to actually approach businesses, markets, cafes and say, can I sing in front of your cafe? Do mum and dad help with that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My parents are so supportive. They come to all my gigs and they help me out when I'm busy in school periods and stuff to keep on top of everything. Um, but yeah, we went, I got my first gig. Someone walked up to me and was like, Hey, do you want a gig? And I was like, sure thing. But now, you know, it's quite funny. We'll go and like knock on doors and be like, hi, my name's Lily. Um, this is how I first started out and I'm a singer. Here's a video of me singing. Um, I'd love to play at your cafe. Can I come in and sing? And, um, yeah. it worked, but it was obviously it was quite nerve wracking, but oh, before gorgeous. singing, yeah, before singing, I was quite shy and, um, introverted. And I guess with singing, you know, you have to get in front of a crowd of people and entertain Mm. them and thank them for coming, which is the nice thing to do. And I want to do that. But if I was shy, I wouldn't do that. So through my music, I think I've kind of grown a lot as a person, um, becoming a lot more confident in myself and, you know, just having, you know, the confidence to get up and sing and talk to people. Yeah, yeah. Lily, um, can you tell me about the first time you sang in front of a large audience yeah what was that like it was was it? what was it okay okay so i went down to the tamworth country music festival here in australia which is a huge country music festival massive and um i bust on the streets as a part of the busking competition they had set up and there were 500 buskers and it was like along this one street it was sound going everywhere absolute craziness and um I went up there and I started busking every day it was a seven day festival and I was up there early morning busking and you know getting my songs out there and then um I did that and they choose top 10 buskers to go perform on main stage which is in front of 5,000 people in Toyota Park and I obviously didn't think I was going to get that it was my first time in Tamworth and I'd never been there before and um the morning before we got a call and they were like hey um you know you've been chosen in top 10 to perform and I was like what that is crazy I know woohoo and um I did not want to do it I was so stubborn I was like dad I'm not doing this I'm not getting in front of 5,000 people and I was I was so stubborn it was hilarious and my dad was like you're getting up there I'm like no I'm not I'm not doing that And he pushed me and I'm so glad he did because I would have regretted it so much if he didn't. But um, I got up in that crowd. I was so nervous. I was like shaking and my voice was croaky because I was scared. And And I I bet your heart was like beating 100 miles a minute. Exactly. Like I was 12, this tiny little like thing standing on a stage and all these people there. They were all so lovely, but at the time Mm. I did not take it in. I was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) So funny. Do you remember what you sang, Lily? Yeah, I sung two covers. Um, back then, mm. I only really did covers at the time. Yes. But um, I sung I'm Yours by Jason Mraz and yes. um, If I Die Young by the band. Of oh, Harry. wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and so I know the story and I know that you had a huge reaction, but it's that's that first time, I guess, is the catalyst in knowing oh, yeah. that you can do this that you can get up and entertain a crowd and you're actually good at it so that was at 12 and you've gone on and you've got amazing things happened in the next 
few years. And some of those things included working with some of Australia's well-known artists like James Blundell. Tell me what it was like working with James. It was the most rewarding experience. And James, if you know him, he's the most selfless, kind, giving person you'll ever meet. And um, I met him through a mutual friend, Tanya Kernigan. And yes. we've both been booked to play on a show with him, me and Tanya. But um, something came up and Tanya couldn't do the show. And James, I already met him at this point, And he goes, oh, well, you know, we could still go ahead. And I was like, oh, sure yeah. thing. I'll open the show and you can, um, <laughs> you know, headline. And he's like, no. And I'm like, what do you mean, James? He goes, well, I was thinking we do co-headlining, right? I play a set, you play a set, and we do one together. And I'm like, oh, if wow. you insist, which is crazy. <laughs> so this is like me, um, 15. I haven't released a song yeah. out, and I'm, you know, yeah. performing a headlining show with James Blundell of all names. Yes. And um, we had that little set together at the end, mm-hmm. and um, we had a bit of a gap in it. We were like, what are we going to sing? We were singing two yeah. of my songs, two of his, two covers. We wanted to do one more song. And I was yeah. like, oh, what if what if we wrote a song together? He goes, oh, yeah, we could do that. What a good idea. And um, it actually happened. We sat down. He was in yeah. his back shed being the country fella he is. Mm-hmm. I was in my back bedroom. And lazy yeah. Sunday afternoon, we wrote this song. It was called Annie June. And, yes, um, I've listened to it. It's really oh, good. Oh, thank you. And um, I was so happy with how it turned out. It sounded, it was such a fun song to sing. And yes. we had we met up for the show like two weeks later and we had some radio interviews for the show mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we were going in and we were going to sing this song live. And we got off the performance and we were yeah. just totally digging it. We were really into the song. And I was like, James, you know, I kind of want to release this song. It's good. And he goes, totally. We should like do it together. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> so a series of like, really fortunate events for me. And then yes. we released that song. He did incredibly well. It reached as high as number two on the iTunes country chart, um, number two on CMT, and it was incredible. It had like 80,000 streams on Spotify. It just it was amazing for a debut release. and um, Absolutely. It really put my name in the game, which I was very lucky for. Yeah. Lily, in talking about songwriting, um, mm. at what age did you think, I want to write my own stuff? And how did you figure out how to do that? Yeah, well, I kind of, obviously, I started out singing covers. But when I was Mm. 12, I'd written a couple of songs just about Ah. big things that happened in my life. But when quarantine first hit, the first round of quarantine, there was nothing else to do but stay at home and play music. Mm. And um, I really wanted to write my own songs, you know, what was happening. And I started, I set a goal for myself to write as many songs as I could over that period because I knew it wasn't going to last forever. (laughs) <laughs> and I wanted to start performing original shows. And yeah. um, so I kind of, my whole goal was just to get better at songwriting. And I started writing a song or two a day and I was just mm-hmm. pumping them out. And they were so bad. They were really bad. <laughs> but um, Don't say that. <laughs> but I got there. I got there. And yeah. I, after a little while of, you know, continuing to write the songs and um, I started to improve, obviously, and mm-hmm. got some really good ones pumped out, which is exciting. And now... Yeah. Um, I'm at a stage where I get home from school and I write a song about, you know, normally something that Whatever. happens in my life or mm. something in the life of one of my friends or my family mm. members. And yeah. um, I just love it. It's so much fun. It's really nice, a really nice place to release. And, you know, you can write what you're feeling um, yes. unapologetically. Absolutely. Um, Lily, we're going to play one of your songs a little bit later. But before we do, um, I wanted to talk about your, um, a little bit more about your creative process. And you just said that you write about the things that are going on in your life, your friend's life and your family life. Do you think that you'll get to the point where you start uh, writing about the bigger things that are happening across the planet, perhaps? Does that interest you at some stage? Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. At the moment, I mean, I'm 16. I write songs about, yes. you know, yes. t- teenage Perfect. stuff. <laughs> but um, I've written a couple of songs that I think are really important songs. And um, yeah. like my brother had a disability and um, he was in a wheelchair for quite a while. And um, I wrote a song about people staring at them because he was constantly, he'd go to the shops and everyone would stare at him. And he hated going out because he was like, you know, why are people looking at me? I'm no different. 
so I, and I think I, I sung that song for a very long time live and everyone, you could see the impact it had on people, which I thought was a yeah. really beautiful thing. So yeah. I reckon, you know, I definitely would love to do something like that again, like something that's very important yeah. and do it yeah. properly and, um, you know, release it with the impact it has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lily, how do you pick which songs you're going to release and which ones you're just going to chuck in the bin for a little while? I have so many songs I want to release right now. Um, I've written ah. about 250, but there are about 10 that I really, really want to release. So mm-hmm. I go into my producers and I play them live and I'm like, we should do this one. This is the one. Then I'll play the next. I'm like, this is the one. We have to do this one. And they're like, you can't record like <laughs> it's so funny but yeah. so I'm pumping out lots of songs at the moment and working on them to hopefully release mm-hmm. throughout this year again because yes. I love releasing music my yes. favorite thing to do and yeah it's fun um Lily you release them as single songs what about an album mm, totally I would love to do an album more than anything in the world um mm-hmm. just at the moment balancing school and stuff it's obviously a balancing act really and- tricky Exactly. And um, I reckon I'm going to keep going on the singles route at the moment. And hopefully, you know, very soon, hopefully I can throw all those songs I've been meaning to release onto an album and get them out into the world. I would love to do that. It'd be so rewarding and a dream of mine. I'm I'm actually really glad that in this day and age, you can just release those singles and still do your school because, you know, school's a bit important. We don't think it's important when we're that age, but, you know, (laughs) it's kind of, kind of important. Um, Mind you, if you're Australia's next Taylor Swift, you probably (laughs) won't have to, but some of that stuff will be helpful. You might not realise it till decades later, but you'll suddenly think, (laughs) oh, well, that was good to learn. I'm glad I learned that in school. Some of it you'll yeah. never think about it ever again, but no. it's a good place to to stay grounded and connected to your friends and teachers and a safe place for you to, Lily, because the world is a massive big place and I know that you'll be travelling eventually and going to the global marketplace with your amazing music. Now, TJ, uh, speaking of amazing music, TJ is ready and waiting to play one of your songs. Can you give the audience a background about the song, tell us its name, and then we'll get TJ. DJ to play it for us and come back to the interview after that. Absolutely. This is um, my latest single and it's coming out. It's 11th of February it's released and I'm so happy to have it out into the world. I wrote it about six months ago and I've wanted Mm -hmm. to release it ever since. And the song is called The Two of Us Meet. It's been released just in time for Valentine's Day. And it's a really cute little country love song. And um, it's about having feelings for someone who is new and you don't know Mm. their backstory, their history or anything about them. So you doubt them, even though they did did nothing wrong, nothing to deserve that, and you just don't trust them. But um, when you're with them, that all changes and everything gets better. So it's a cute little love song called The Two of Us Meet. Thanks, TJ. your story no one knows your truth you can do everything right take every box inside i'm just saying to you my head plays tricks on me the next thing i'll just be it's a walk out on a limb journey on a tightrope i'm so balancing keeping it steady but then you take Trying to think it through Can't deny every feeling and every way 
way it took me feels like deja vu. No, it might just mean nothing. Maybe it's a girl thing. Maybe it's you. When I ask you to smile, say that she's a good friend. Guess I'll take your word for it. Don't want this to end. But then you take my hands and I'll run you through the dark. I have faith in you. I have faith in you, you won't take your love apart. Take my hands and I'll run you through the dark. I have faith in you, you won't take your love apart. Growing strong, but my heart still skips a beat. For the first time live on the show, Lily Grace with the two of us meet. Lily, that was awesome. Thank you. I'm so happy. It's I'm so happy with that song. I'm so excited. It's beautiful. Can Thank I ask you. who accompanies you? So obviously you play I'm and so sorry, sing. you just cut out there. <laughs> sorry. Am I back? <laughs> That's okay. That happens when we're doing Zoom live yeah. <laughs> across the planet. Who is the wonderful guitar player that accompanies you? His name is Kevin Briggs, and Kevin is my guitar teacher. He has been for three years. Um, he actually played for Boney M. He's the guitarist of Boney M. He's an immensely wow. talented guy. Um, very, very humble, though. You wouldn't know it if he wouldn't tell you. But um, yes. he's just amazing. He's a very inspirational guy as well. He's very kind, giving, and talented obviously <laughs> yeah and Lily is he here on the Gold Coast or do you have to where was that recorded on the Gold Coast yeah yeah just on the Gold Coast yeah, yeah. oh awesome I love the fact that we're creating world-class music on the Gold Coast that's amazing <laughs> Thank amazing you. it's um, awesome so how can people get that single because I yes. want people to go out and get that single. I want people to follow you on socials. I want people to connect. And I want oh. to make this single Thank the you. biggest success <laughs> you've had so far. Yeah? Oh, so where yes. can people go? So this song has been released tomorrow. So February yes. 11th. Um, yes. It's called The Two of Us Meet. But if you head to my social media, there's pre-save links. So you can make sure you don't miss it. Um, my social media is Lily Grace Live, L I L Y Grace Live. Insta, Facebook, YouTube, whatever you're on, um, it'll come up there. And um, I'm really happy to have this song out. It's gonna be. It's been a very long time coming, and I'm really yeah. proud of how it's sounding. So I it's hope beautiful. it does well. It's Thank really you. good. The words are amazing. And for those of you listening live, if you've missed those links, they will also be in the chat box or attached to this interview wherever you're watching it. I can't encourage you enough to support the amazing Lily Grace, oh. only 16 years old and going great places. And I hope that you'll remember in the future when you're incredibly uh, famous across the planet and you'll come back and tell us how you're going and that you'll tell us when that album is going to be released. So I'm also curious about some of the things that you dream about in the future. What are the big dreams, Lily Grace? Yeah, um, my major goal is just to continue writing my own music. 
and mm -hmm. um my two favorite things to do are write music and perform music and yes. I love writing because you can be very honest and share exactly how you feel um with no filter and I love mm -hmm. performing because you can connect with people through that music especially when they're attentive and they're listening to the stories that is such a beautiful thing um mm -hmm. but my major goal is just to write my own music and have an audience yes. that respects it but um, something else that I'm looking forward to is I really hope to move to Nashville um, when I graduate yeah. school. Yeah. And um, I've got a Nashville team helping me out with this release, which is very exciting. Ah. It's the first time um, being released in the US. I've never released a song in the US apart from on yes. streaming. So yes. I've been having a very good time working with them. And I hope mm -hmm. to go visit Nashville soon as well. It's a big yeah. goal of mine on the bucket list. Yeah. I was just going to say, Lily, bearing in mind that we've been in a global pandemic and we mm. just have not been able to travel, were you able to travel before that happened or you've not actually been able to travel much out of um, Australia? Yeah, I was planning on going about two years mm. ago. To be fair, yes. probably wasn't ready to go, but um, I really <laughs> wanted to. And yeah. I'm... It's a blessing in disguise, really, because now I've, you know, released some of my own music. I have a bigger catalogue mm. and yeah. I think it'd be a much more enjoyable experience to go over there. So mm. I really hope to go this year. Fingers crossed COVID holds off yes. and the borders yes. stay open. Um, I would love to go there. So you'll just... So you'll just go for a visit, Lily, to perform and connect and, and meet people, yeah? I reckon so. Yeah. And when we talk about the future and you talk about moving over there, do you – what? Do, how do mum and dad feel about that? Obviously, you have to go. Like, there's no yeah. decision there. You have to go <laughs> because Nashville is where it all happens. Although, mm. um, you know, we've got people like Keith Urban actually mm. in Australia at the moment. Have you had yeah. opportunity to meet, like, people like Keith? I haven't. I mean, he should call me up. I'd love to meet him. <laughs> I was just going to say, you're like, yeah, Keith and Nicole are in Australia at the moment. Yeah. Like, that sounds like a pretty easy ask to me. I so, know, know. Keith Why and Nicole, if, if, you know, if, if you're listening by any chance, uh, yeah. reach out and connect with, with Lily because uh, she'd love to chat. <laughs> I would, honestly. <laughs> but, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. I see Nashville as, you know, it's music yes. city. It's where all yes. the music makes are, all the industry yes. people. And yes. I've heard so many good things. Um, I have my producers from over there and he's just mm. in my ear about it. He's like, oh, in Nashville, in Nashville. And <laughs> I've just got this amazing image in my head from so many yeah. people telling me that Nashville yeah. is the place. And yes. um, I'm very convinced that it is. And I really, really want to go. Yeah. And just even just to experience it for a little while and, you know, meet people, write music and collaborate, mm. that'd be, I couldn't ask for anything more than that. Absolutely. And I know um, from talking to um, other mu musicians that there's something about the atmosphere of a particular town or a particular environment that inspires the creativity mm. that sits behind the singing and writing mm -hmm. so I know that that will happen for you um, I'm guessing that Tamworth has that same sort of energy and creativeness did yeah. you find that as well absolutely my first Tamworth the thing about the country music community they're so supportive and nurturing to young artists and mm. I came in at 12 someone who you know is very fresh and next door to us was Troy Cassadaly in our hotel and um as you know as you do and he um yeah. I was rehearsing like for the big set on main stage you know he yes. knocks on the door and he comes over he's like oh hello how are you and I was like oh hey Troy how are you and you know gave me some pointers he's like oh just believe in yourself you know just really nurturing oh. kind of person and the yeah. whole country music community is like that you know James obviously oh. Tanya yes. Um, Very, Amber yes. Lawrence, Lynn Botel, they're all such beautiful people and they really care about the young ones coming through, yeah. which is such a beautiful yeah. thing because they're constantly mm -hmm. trying to help me out in any way they can and they really mean that. So Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful to hear that the country music se sector are so yeah. supportive of the young because it can be tough out there, can't it, Lily? Like, Absolutely. It, it's, tough to, it's tough to practice as much as you need to practice to fit in life, you know, school and family and all the rest of it, and then to continuously put yourself out there, particularly as an introvert. I know how hard that is, and I know how scary that can be. What are some of the things that, that scare you or terrify you, or have you worked your way through most of those things? 
Yeah, well, obviously, originally I was very scared of performing in front of audiences, but um, I've kind of gotten over that now just from practice and doing it over and over again. But I think the scariest thing for me is writing really personal, vulnerable songs. Yeah. And, um, the thing about that is if it's a good song, I'm going to release it. So it's, I think putting them out and knowing everyone is going to hear it and, you know, my friends, my family, my grandparents are all going to hear that song. Yeah. And I think that's quite, it's a good thing because people can connect to it and that's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing about it. They can, you know, connect with me through the song, but at the same time, people, you know, hear that song. It's exactly how you're feeling personally, which I think is quite a scary it's thing. It's very yeah 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 when you write songs that involve um other people say uh you know your friends or or love interests or family do you have a conversation with them about no. the words of the song <laughs> you just go with what we you just feel go is... with it. yeah and that takes courage as well doesn't it like what if they hear the song and go oh my god i hate it I'm not thinking that that will happen, of course, based on your talent and abilities, but what if that did happen? What would your response be? I don't know. Honestly, I I say that Taylor Swift is a funny example of that. She puts their yes. names in the songs. It's the most iconic thing. I think it's hilarious. Yes. Um, there's nothing they can do about it, but honestly, I don't know what I'd say. It just It'd be a very funny yep. conversation to have, that's for sure. <laughs> I was just going to say, Taylor Swift actually does that really well and you get to know who she's talking about and you yeah. don't actually often hear that particular person's response to that song. So yeah, I'm kind of no. guessing that it's it's about the song, it's about the yeah. vulnerability and it's about the experience, isn't it? Totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you play any other instruments besides the guitar? I play live with a stomp box guitar and vocals. So oh, I have a little bit of a little drum beat adding on. But yes. at the moment, I'm trying to teach myself piano. And it's a bit of a slow process. Ooh. But um, I love it for songwriting because it's a very different mm. kind of sound and, mm. um, you know, different feel when you play. So I'm working on that at the moment. And it's kind of an iconic image of the the really? singer songwriter tapping out tunes on a piano. But I do know yeah. that it's it, it's challenging to learn, um, and it it takes a while to master. So yeah. that's that's another thing that you've added to this this busy life of yours. So when we go back and think about Tamworth, so that was an audience of 5,000. Does that remain the biggest audience or have you played to bigger audiences? That's the biggest audience I've played since then. But that was, I play more, you know, I've played at some other festivals and stuff. They haven't reached Mm -hmm. 5,000, but some still some Mm -hmm. huge crowds. But the special thing about it is now I'm singing original music to these audiences, Mm -hmm. not just covers which is, I think, a lot more important to me, especially in the long run. Definitely, definitely. And the other thing to point out too is we are still in the midst of a pandemic, so big crowds are not a thing that they're easily to come by. So you've got to take what you can get when you can get it. Um, In terms of your original songwriting, um, I'm guessing that you, um, you write for yourself at some point, do you think there'll be an option for you to write for other people? Mm, I hope so. I love writing. And I think in Nashville as well, that's the whole culture of it all. Yes. You know, write as many songs as you can and pitch them to people. And yeah. I think at the moment, it's always me writing songs for myself. But then mm-hmm. if, you know, I decide not to release that song, you know, give it to someone else so it can go out into the world and people mm-hmm. can hear it. I think that's yeah. something I definitely love to do sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you often hear, you know, some of the more well-known songs that that people write and you'll note that the songwriter is an equally famous or or creative person in their own right. So they're actually writing songs that they could sing for themselves, but they're not. They're releasing it under someone else's name. I was curious about the cover songs as well and – um. And I'm curious about the background of of singing other people's songs. Can you do that freely or are there certain things that you have to do that protect you if you're singing someone else's song? I'm curious about the background of that. 
It's quite a confusing concept to wrap your head around. And I yeah. still haven't wrapped it around myself completely, but um, you have to, you know, register it and stuff and note that you did sing the song. See. And um, you don't have to pay or anything, but that means that the songwriter yeah. who wrote that song gets paid royalties because it's being played in a public place. So yes. it's, I think it's a, I think it's good because the songwriter themselves, you know, still makes a profit off their song being played, which is an yeah. important thing. And so you have to pay them to actually sing their cover song? No. No, no, you get to sing it, but they get royalties if uh, that song was sold. Is that my understanding? You're um, right, it's kind of confusing. It's really confusing. <laughs> I think it's pretty much you sing the song and then because you're playing it in a public place, the songwriter gets royalties. And mm-hmm. I don't know where that money comes from, but um, it goes to the <laughs> artist who wrote the song. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, because you sang so many cover songs early in your career, is it likely that at one stage you'll do an album of color, cover songs? At this stage, I don't think so. I mean, it was yeah. quite a while ago that I did that. Yeah. And songwriting is my favorite thing to do. So I reckon it'll and definitely you've... be more originals. Yeah. Good. Because you've got quite a stable of um, original content now, haven't you? Like yeah. you've been writing steadily, consistency, consistently for mm. quite a period of time. So there's a lot of songs there to be released yeah. as you go along. I have so many songs I want to release and I've got this whole list yeah. in my phone of, you know, this one, this one, this <laughs> one. And it's, <laughs> it's so funny. And some of my friends are like, you have to release this one. Then like, oh no, but this yeah. one. And then people who come to my shows are like, you have to release this song. And I'm like, how do I win? There's like people yeah. from different angles yeah. pulling you, but I definitely know which one I want to release next. So hopefully yes. that can be the next one. And it, because releasing a song takes your energy, time, and there's a whole lot of background stuff that goes in behind releasing, releasing a song. Can you tell the audience about the, those background processes that go into releasing a song? It's a very big process. It takes about, mm. you know, a, a, a long couple of months to even set it up before yes. you actually announce it. But, yeah. you know, you start, I bring the song in raw with my guitar and vocals mm. and, to the production team who are incredibly talented, Michael and Caleb Flanders. And um, we kind of work out what we're going to do. We build it from a guitar and vocal track and add instrumentation mm-hmm. and we get our session players in and we get the song all put together. When we like how it sounds, it gets mixed, mastered, and we get the final track back. And then yeah. we have to upload it to the, all the streaming services, um, take uh-huh. photo shoots, um, the graphic design of the cover art, um, a video. Yes. Um, yes. and all the content and stuff to go along on social media. So it's a very big process. And also like the radio and the, you know, press outlets and everything that goes into I was just going to say, it. I was just thinking, but, so, so the process of actually producing the song is, is involved, number one. But then when you get to the end product, there's a whole range of things that you have yeah. to do across social media, digital totally. marketing. You have to connect with all the radio, show, radio stations to try and get them to play it, I'm guessing. And then yeah. there's all the background media, so TV and, and print media. They have to yeah. all be lined up so that you can go, okay, Okay, we're releasing this on the 11th. Please get me on your show, TV. Please download. Yeah. All of that stuff is quite involved, isn't it? It is a huge process. It's quite unbelievable. I think almost it's almost 20% of the music, 80% marketing when you're putting a song out. And yeah. it's quite crazy how much goes into it, you know, getting all your everything that's going to go live, um, mm-hmm. all your photos, videos. There's so much that goes into it. And um yeah. As much as I love releasing music, it's a big process. I definitely couldn't do it every yeah. month. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lily, do you do a lot of that stuff yourself or do you have creative partners that work with you and you go, yes, I like that. No, I don't like that. This is not quite right. This is on on brand because Lily Grace <laughs> is becoming a brand, aren't you? Yeah. I, um, I've been working on with my just on my own for the last you know, yes. four years now. And only in the last month, I've had a team who's come on to help me just balance everything, especially with this US release. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's been a lot more successful getting things done because, you know, it's not just working with one person. I know. My parents also help me out. I know what that's like. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's a huge, it's a huge feat. And um, so I have a team that's helping me, you know, do my social media, my radio, my, um, just everything there, which is really exciting because it makes everything 
a lot easier and a lot more efficient. That's for sure. Yes. But the thing is, though, Lily, if you've had to do it yourself for so long, you actually, uh, you know the process. So you can, like, uh, correct, step in, align. I'm wondering, have mum and dad had to learn all of these things as well as you've grown? <laughs> yeah, my parents, absolutely. My mum and dad are so supportive. They help me out with everything. And um, there's just a lot to do and stuff. And before I had this mm. natural team, especially, they, um, mm. you know, they've helped me learn everything. My mom's learned graphic design. She's um, does all my cover art and everything. Mom. She is amazing, a real trooper. And um, they just, they've learned everything with me, honestly. We've kind of gone from That's knowing nothing phenomenal. and just meeting That's people, phenomenal. calling them up, asking, how yeah. do you do this? And how do you um, do- yeah. Kind of, yeah, kind of learn from other people and learn how to do it ourselves, which is, I think it's a really cool thing because now we know how it all works. Um, we have the experience and kind of skill set if we wanted to do it on our own. Yes, and, absolutely. Um, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And and that's the thing too, Lily. Like I said before, you're building a brand from the ground up because I know that your vision is is really big and powerful and the way to do that is is brand building and creating this image and around your songs and creativity. I uh, I just can't wait to see what you create in the next few years. I actually think that it will be incredibly mm. exciting um for you uh as as you head towards the future can i ask what's the next so obviously the next big thing is releasing the song on the 11th of february what's after that do you have a little quick breather or do you just start working on the next thing well it's going to be a big process with this one and everything Mm. you know we've set it all up it's just ready to go which i'm i'm so excited it's been so much work um getting it all ready to go but um yeah. I'm going to continue releasing a lot of new music. Obviously, my unreleased songs I want to release. Um, I've got some shows coming up as well, which is exciting. So, um, What shows have I've, you got coming up? Yeah, I've booked in two headlining shows at um, in Townsville and Bundaberg. Yes. And, and yeah. um, it's called Up Close and Personal. It's a stripped back acoustic show. Where I'll be playing oh. all my unreleased music as well as my own original, like, that I, that add into the world mm-hmm. um and that's going to be amazing so we're going to work on that um mm-hmm. i'm going down to tamworth in um, yes. april as well and i've got a gig at another country festival called easter in the country in roma yes so i'll be yes. there so a couple of g- exciting gigs coming up too as well as obviously new music and balancing mm-hmm. school but yes. um definitely working towards all that stuff as we go yeah do you um, have you attended the um, Gympie Country Music Festival? I was booked to play this year, but then it got cancelled. I was just gonna I say, know. I have a feeling that it got cancelled because that's yeah. massive. So um, I, I I lived in Gympie for for oh, decades, yeah. and so the very we went to the very first country music festivals oh, back when they look were. At that are uh, very tiny and yeah. saw the growth um, of those festivals over the years to the massive thing okay. that they are, juggernaut that they are now. Yeah. And um, I remember, oh, gosh, at 18 going to the first of those country music festivals and sitting on a grassy hill listening to an open stage where mm. uh people like the Webb brothers I actually have so a feeling cool. James Blundell was there wow at that time. the Kernigans were there as well yeah. um so back in the really early wow. ages and to see yeah. um and I knew the people that helped organize it as well and I knew the growth and what it had become um and what it is now and um yes I was wondering if they were going to try and hold it this year since yeah. they cancelled it last year I've been booked to play twice now and it's been cancelled both times and it's such a shame. I really wish, you know, it would go ahead. I feel terrible for the organisers. All their hard work has been thrown away because of COVID. It's it's in the middle of nowhere in this massive grounds with massive um, arenas, main stages, um, smaller, smaller intimate venues and just masses and masses of people that you know camp out it sounds for amazing beforehand just to come and listen to the quality of the country music that is yeah. played at that festival so um it, it, 
would be amazing if you got to sing there again because it's the the one place where lots of uh, beginning artists and major artists play. So that would be fantastic. Yeah. I really so, hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but, you know, we, we've had this whole strange um, pandemic and it nothing that we've ever had to live through before. So mm -hmm. it's wonderful to hear that you've been able to navigate this time as a young artist and and, and in an unusual time space in that we can't travel like we used to or we can't um, do the big events that we had been. But I think that that's changing and I think that that's growing and it's exciting to hear that you're booked already for Bundaberg and Townsville because yeah. they have massive country music um, followers oh, yeah. and, and fans and they love their country music so they're great spaces for you to go and play at. Um, outside of Australia, what would be your next favourite place to go to? And I know you're going to say Nashville but is there <laughs> anywhere else in the world besides Nashville that you'd like to go in terms of country music? Honestly, Nashville is the place I've always thought of. But everyone also says Memphis is a big country music ah, scene. And yeah. they're saying it's like the new Nashville in a way. So I'm not really sure. I haven't really sussed it out yet, but I've heard yeah. a lot of good things about it. So maybe there as yeah. well. Maybe there as well. Well, if you're in the US, like you may as well go to the yeah. different places that are important. So do you Why see not? yourself spending time between Australia and the US predominantly in the future? I hope so. I do see that happening. Um, I don't know. I've just always, I've got this big dream to go and live in Nashville, um, in big yeah. country music city. Um, yeah. But I do love Australia. I love my home. Oh, I yes. Live, I've, of course. I was born, on the Gold, born in Brisbane. I've lived in the Gold Coast my entire life. Mm. And um, all my family's here and I love it. I love it here so much. So I think I would definitely yes. miss it if I were to move yeah. away. But um, I don't know. It is country in music city as well. I was well, just going to so. say, in terms of your career, you actually have to sometimes move away for it mm. to move forward. And who knows? who will hear you, notice you and pick you up in between now and then because you've still got to get through two years of school, hey? Yeah, two more years. So is completing school a non-negotiable? So yes. what <laughs> if what if the single takes off and you rocket to mega stardom? You'd still complete <laughs> school? I don't want to get ahead of myself or anything. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but um, I know, I reckon I'd... If something like that happened, it'd probably I'd still want to finish. Think school. about maybe it. It might yes. have to be virtually or something, or yeah. be a different kind of arrangement. But um, yeah. still, really want to finish school and just have that ATAR to have with me. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I I would agree with you. I think it's important, and I'm probably mum and dad would be thinking that it's equally <laughs> important that you have that basis from which to totally. launch yourself into the world. And being that we live in the world that we do now with the technology and the ability to Zoom yeah. and call, I actually think that's completely doable for you to mm -hmm. finish school and keep producing and releasing singles one at a time. Because let's face it, in the next two years, you could have quite a massive portfolio of songs ready to go and launch yourself into Nashville with that portfolio yeah yeah that'd be such a cool thing to do honestly just keep yeah. riding through high school and then you know yes. all at the end of it that'd yeah be I, it would give me it? ideas <laughs> Well, I know that we've talked about how prolifically you write and produce songs. So that's actually dual and achievable. And oh. having that background of singing and songwriting and then just go mm. to Nashville and go, here's me, here's Lily Grace, <laughs> yeah. here's what I've got. And having all that music behind you would be oh. a really, uh, it sounds like a safe thing to do knowing that you will yeah. you have that behind you and that when you get to Nashville you can actually probably create some new and inventive uh create sounds that are a little bit different yeah. whilst you've got all the the wonderful Lily Grace content just waiting to be released 100% so the new single just dream big and tell me what that would look like success-wise for you. Tell me what that looks like for you, Lily. 
The most rewarding thing about releasing songs is going through my comment sections and my DMs and hearing people saying they love the song or they related to the song Mm -hmm. or they've been listening to it on repeat. That is the most rewarding thing. And charts and stuff, that stuff is cool, it is. But I think the most... The most important one is when For people you. are actually connecting to the music. And yeah. I mean, so just as many of those messages as possible would be, you know, that's Good. successful for me. That's so amazing to hear that you like to hear from the people that you um, yeah. that listen to your music course, and let you know that they connect with you. Um, and social media is such a great platform for it just is, that hey. base level connection and go, Lily, that was amazing. I love that song, etc., etc. That's that's wonderful. Now, before we run out of time, I want you to tell the audience one by one how they can connect with you. How can they get the new release? And what's the best way to listen to your music? Thank you. Um, Best way to connect with me is through social media. Um, Lily Grace Live, L-I-L-Y Grace Live, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you're on. Um, If you want more information about me on my website, Lily Grace Live, L-I-L-Y Grace Live.com. And... um, Also, if you listen to my music, Spotify, Apple, Mm. Amazon, whatever you're on, if you search up Lily Grace, I'll come up. I have two songs out at the moment and tomorrow I'll have one more out. So the single will be there and (laughs) we yeah. Excellent. So they can get any of those three songs that are released. Uh, sorry, pardon me, released. Uh, your new song is released tomorrow and I want people to go out and find Lily's new release. Just once more, really, uh, Lily, the new song is... So sorry, you cut out again. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Can you tell the old audience one last time, the new song is released tomorrow. What is it and where can they get it? Yes. The Two of Us Meet by Lily Grace coming out tomorrow. Um, you can currently pre-save it through the links are on my social media. Um, but tomorrow it'll be up on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, whatever you like. Lily Grace Live, the two of us. <laughs> Fantastic. Lily, um, also for those listening, if you've missed this, if you're driving, listening to this in the car, the links to all of Lily's um, content, her songs, where you can get the, so- the new song and the new release tomorrow, will be attached to this video wherever you're listening or watching back. I can't encourage you enough to get out and support this amazing 16-year-old mm-hmm. Australian singer, songwriter, whose specialty is in country music. She does a phenomenal job job has worked incredibly hard since she first started singing and songwriting and I'd really love the audience to get on board and support Lily Grace um, any way you see how and as she mentioned before she loves to chat so please reach out (laughs) and chat to Lily Grace before she gets too busy to chat back. (laughs) Now is the time to have a chat with Lily because she's headed for bigger and better things down the track especially when she gets to the US so I encourage you to jump on board with Lily Grace now versus later do it tomorrow grab that new release. Lily Grace I know that I have to let you go and let you go back to school lily has been (laughs) grateful we're grateful that lily's taken a break in her school day just to come on the show and tell us about her writing songwriting and her career we are incredibly grateful that you've been on the show today to tell us about your journey so far we look forward to having you back on the show at any stage you can spare us your oh. time any time that you're releasing a new song please get in touch and let us know we'll get you back on tony tv lily grace i'm gonna let you go and go back to school thank you so much thank you for so much for having program. me on thank you so much it's for having how- me it's our pleasure. Now, one last plug. Get out and get the new single from Lily Grace. And that, my friends, is your lot for today. We will be back next week on the Everyday Business Show. Of course, we've been talking today about the business of music. And who better to hear from the business of music than Lily Grace? Um, 
we need to go now and get off air and we need to let Lily go back to school and finish her day. Lily Grace, thank you so much. And we will chat again soon. Audience, thank you so much for tuning in and listening today. Don't forget to jump on and subcri- subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tony TV, and catch up with Lily Grace on lilygracelive.com. Thanks, Lily. Bye for now, everyone. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability because if I fail, that means I fail for my entire female nation, I call it. <laughs> is that possible? That was a question for myself. And it is absolutely possible. Is that possible? That was a question for myself. And it is absolutely possible. Is that possible?